today we're going to talk about inverse trig functions. So this is y equals sine of x, right? And to get the inverse of sine of x, inverse of sine of x gives you back an angle. So sine of x gives you the ratio of two sides, and the inverse sine gives you an angle. So if I were to draw a triangle, or a triangle, uh, triangle, right. triangle, right. if I were to draw a triangle, a right triangle, okay? So whereas, uh, whereas if I have an angle, like sine of that angle, would give you the ratio of this side to this side. And all that the inverse trig function does is for x, you plug in the ratio of this side to this side, and it would give you that angle. So that's all basically that the inverse trig function is. It's, it does the opposite of what, um, of what the function, of what the original sine or cosine or secant or whatever the different functions have to be, okay? So it does the opposite. So for instance, if you have something like f of x, and you plug in 3 in here, I think we did this in the beginning of the year, and I get out, I get out 9, okay? If I take that 9 and I plug it into its inverse, I get out 3, right? So, so the inverse undoes what the original function does. So if I have, for instance, the sine of 30 degrees, you should know that from your unit circle. What do I get out? Oh, oh, that's the root of three over. No, no, you should know this one real quick. That's one half. And then if I take the inverse sine of one half, I should get out 30 degrees, okay? And this is where it's important for you to know which mode you're in, okay? So, so inverse if they want the answer in degrees, you want to be in degree mode. If they want the answer in radian, then you need to be in radian mode. So that's where you use the second sign key on your calculator to get those kinds of answers. Now the problem with inverse sine and inverse cosine inverse tangent is that their inverses are not really functions, okay? Because, I don't know if you guys remember, but the way you graph an inverse <coughs> If this is the sine function, see this red one going from here to here? That's part of the sine function. It would go up and down, up and down forever. Yeah. And then if I graph the inverse of any function, it's the reflection over this line, which is y equals x. Okay? So, but the problem with that is if I were to graph the inverse of this one, and I kept going forever and ever, it would go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth forever, and you would get infinitely many y's, in which case it's not a function, right? So you can only, because it has to pass the vertical line, only have one y. Okay? So, yeah, you can only have one y value. So what they do is they restrict the domain of the original function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for sine. And what that does is it restricts the range of the inverse function. Okay, so down here, and I'll tell you what I mean in a minute, okay, so for y equals sine of x, what you can plug in is anything from negative infinity to infinity, and what you get out is anything from negative one to one, okay? So with inverse sine, the only things that you can plug in are from negative one to one. So if I were to plug, take the inverse sine of two, what's gonna happen? If I plug in inverse sine of two, I'm going to get an error. And I could explain why you would get an error, and the reason for that is because, right? If I try to take the inverse sine of 2, okay, and it's in sine, so say this is this angle right here, and this is opposite, and this is hypotenuse, right? There is no angle such that the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse side is going to be bigger than 1. You understand that? Okay? So this can never be bigger than the hypotenuse. Therefore, the sign, the inverse sign, you can never have a value bigger than 1 or a negative 1. And the range will always go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So when you're looking for answers, so what you do is you look for your answers 
in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant when you're looking for the answers for inverse sine. For instance, over here, um, well, that one's pretty easy, right? Um, where in, so what this says is, where is sine equal to 1? Where is sine equal to 1? Look, you can look under unit circle and 90 degrees, okay? Or pi over 2 radians. And if I plug that into my calculator, I would get pi over 2 radians. Now with inverse sine of negative 1 half, okay? Sine is negative in two places. It's negative here and it's negative here. However, uh, we have to restrict the range, what we get out from here to here so I choose this angle right there. Can anyone tell me what that angle is? Where is sine negative one half in the fourth quadrant? Negative 30 degrees, okay? So that angle there would be negative 30 or negative pi over six. So the sine is also negative one half over here at 210 degrees. So we don't, that's not the inverse because A, your calculator can only give you one answer and in order for something to be a function, it can only have one answer. So we restrict, we restrict the range of this inverse sine function. This one is the inverse sine function going like from here to here. And so we restrict the range to go from negative pi over two to pi over two. Because if I kept going up on this axis, I would get like my three pi over two and, my, and all that kind of stuff, okay? So, so that's why, that's how you do it, okay? So use a calcul, oh, I gotta go back. Use a calculator to find the value of each. So let me show you how you could do that. Um, I'm gonna grab my calculator. Where's my calculator? See it? There it is. Right. <coughs> Not 15, it's not 
um, proportional, right? It's probably about 18 or so, 14. Oh, okay? come on. So negative 14.43. Now there's another place, like I said, there's another place on your uh, on your unit circle where sine is sine is negative one fourth down here, but you don't use that one because you restrict your answers to the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Okay. Well, so that's for sine. For sine. Yes. Just for sine. Just for sine. And yeah. tangent, you restrict to the first and fourth quadrant. For cosine, unfortunately. And tangent is the second uh, for we'll talk about that the next time. Okay. So we're just talking about sine and cosine and uh, cotangent. I mean sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay. So the next thing about uh, well, Secant? No, we're not. Yeah, the next time. All right, so this is the graph of cosine. <coughs> and this is the graph of inverse cosine. So what they do with cosine is they restrict the domain from 0 to pi. Okay? Because when I flip around the domain and the range. So what that enables you to do, it lets you go from positive one to negative one for your outputs on, on cosine, which changes the inputs on this thing, which is the inverse cosine function, from negative one to one. And your, your input here is from zero to pi, right? So your output here is from zero up to pi. See that? And if these scales were the same, this these scales are different. See over here I'm numbering by ones and over here I'm here by pi. But if I were to draw in the line y equals x over here, this thing and this thing would be reflections over that line. So so y equals sine of x in that in that area would look something like Cross over Monica and go down like this or something like that. So that would be the cosine function. Can you go over that again real quick? Say that again? Just that whole. This part? The y equals x? No. This is the line y equals x. No, right? just like we start over. Like the main pre for pretend we never got to the graph. We just play. start over. We just start over on the whole thing. That didn't but it's a question. Yeah, I honestly, I don't know what you said. We'll work through with example. So let's look at this one. What is the inverse cosine of one? In other words, where is Zero. where is cosine one? How many degrees or how many radians is when cosine is equal to one? Think about the unit circle. Okay, where on the unit circle is cosine equal to one? right here, right? At yeah. zero degrees. So the answer to this would be zero degrees. Also zero radians, right? Zero rads. Where is cosine equal to negative one half? So this is a little bit trickier because for inverse cosine, you're looking for answers in the first quadrant or in the second quadrant, okay? So, where, which quadrant do I have to be in since cosine is negative? Uh, second. second quadrant. So I'm somewhere over here. And then you have to remember on your unit circle, when is x equal to negative 1 half? When this angle is how many degrees? 120 degrees or uh, 2 pi over 3 radians. Okay? So if you plug this into your calculator, you would get 120 degrees, or you would get 2 pi over 3. It wouldn't, it wouldn't look like that, because your calculator doesn't spit out the answers in terms of pi, but you would get 2 pi over out of 2 pi over 3 gradient. Okay? And if you don't believe me, you can try it yourself. Okay? We'll try a couple more ourselves in a second. So um, let's try a couple more ourselves. So down here, we're going to be asked to do that. You would plug in inverse cosine of one-third. That's going to be a positive number. It's going to be found in the first quadrant. 
You can do that, right? No. So you go second cosine of one third divided by three, and you would get out 70 degrees. And then if you plug in inverse cosine negative one fourth, that's going to give you an answer, which is in which quadrant? Where is cosine negative? Two. In the second quadrant, so let's just check to make sure that's true. Second cosine so what of negative. Write it down. What? What decimal place do you want to write down? Probably three, two decimal places is fine. One, you get 104.47, which is an angle in the second quadrant. See that? Okay, it's not that. Or what was it? Okay. Well, we're going to do more. Well, you're supposed to be getting, like, some of these are exact that you have to get from your unit circle. You won't be able to use your calculator. Okay, so you have to say, like, where is tangent equal to 1? Where is tangent equal to negative root 3? Okay, so remember your tangent graph. It looks like this, and it has a domain from uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's what that means, that kind of funky thing, right? and multiples of pi over 2, so it repeats itself. But tangent, remember, it would, it keeps going forever, right? So it's going to have another squiggle going like up here like this and go on forever like that. So if I were to flip this thing over the line y equals x, which would look something like this, I would get infinitely many of these squiggles and I would have infinitely many y values. So again, what they do with tangent is they restrict the uh, domain to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 okay, of when I'm graphing the inverse. And so the range of the inverse tangent goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's just like sine. So when you're looking for inverse tangent functions, you're looking in quadrant, this is quadrant one and four, just like sine, okay? Except you don't call, you don't get there going this way, you have to get there going backwards or forward. So if I don't get it. kind of looks like a cube root function. Oh, it does kind of look like a cube root function. Very good. Or a, more like a, yeah, exactly like yeah. a cube root. That's very good. Okay, and you can plug in anything to the domain because for inverse tangent you can get out any values because because you can always have an opposite over adjacent side being bigger than one okay and so then let's just do a couple of these where is tangent equal to one at 45 degrees very good 45 degrees which is pi over four radians okay and does anyone remember where invert where tangent is negative root of 3. No. no? No? It's at multiples of 60 degrees, okay? So it's either here, down here, or it's down here, or this reference angle here is 60 degrees, okay? So the tangent of 240 is negative root of 3, but that is not be in quadrant 1 and 4, so what would the answer to this be? Undefined. Undefined? No. One. There's two places where the engine is negative root of three. One is here, and <coughs> one is here. So what do I call this? What is this angle right here? What's that angle? Negative 60 degrees, okay? Or negative pi over three radians. No, you don't call it pi over 300 because that's not between negative pi over two and pi over three. Okay, so yeah, you, it is equivalent to, it ends at the same place, but to get there with inverse tangent, you have to go back. So inverse sine and inverse tangent, you go in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. Inverse cosine, you go first and second, okay? So let's just look at a couple more of these example problems, and then we'll be done, okay? So we did these two, right? What would be the inverse cosine of cosine of pi over 12? So Wait, the tangent only in the same quadrant as the sine. The tangent is the same quadrant as the sine. So, so draw yourself a little picture for these. Yeah. And uh, so where is pi over 12? 
You guys know where Pyro Grove is? Please tell me you know where Pyro Grove is. Which quadrant would that be in? In the first quadrant, right? Yeah. So if I were to draw a little angle there, good. So this says the cosine of pi over 12 gives you some ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So whatever that is, I don't know, but if I call this, uh, I'm going to call this y and this x. So opposite over adjacent, right? Right? Yeah. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Oh, sorry, I was yeah. looking at cosine. I'm sorry. That's okay. yeah. So the cosine is y over h in this case, right? And so what this says is I want the angle whose cosine, the cosine of pi over 12 gives you some ratio of this to this, okay? And so I want the inverse cosine, that angle, what should I get out? Pi over 12. Pi over 12. Remember that the inverse function undoes the regular function. Okay? So inverse undoes. So this says there is some angle whose cosine is negative 0.4. Okay? So that would be uh, that would be an angle over here somewhere as it's cosine the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side is negative. And the cosine of that angle is negative point four. This one undoes this one. Is this true? Yes. Okay. Is this true? Yeah. No. How come? Why not? Because the cosine doesn't cancel the inverse cosine. No. Who can tell me why this is not two? Why is this not two? Very good, Austin. Yeah. Austin paying attention. Because inverse cosine only goes between, you can only plug in values between negative 1 and 1. So if I were to plug in inverse cosine of 2, I'm going to get an error. And you can't take the cosine of an error, right? So watch. If I do take second cosine of 2, my calculator should give me an error. What does it say? It, it, it just says go to. It's a domain error, right? So you can't plug in a number less bigger than one or less than eight. Okay? And that's it. Remember you heard it here on Mr. Leader's YouTube channel. And you also heard a Leader original joke today, so that was pretty good. All right. So the end.